folks, welcome back. So today on Tackle Talk, we're going to be talking about trolling for walleye, the components used in trolling for walleye, what I use, and hopefully it will help you to put more walleye into your boat. So the two things that we're going to be using today, one is a dipsy diver, the other is a jet diver. Now jet divers are very simple to use, it's just let the line out, set the pole in the rod holder, and let it drag you down to the desired depth. On the end of each jet diver has a number. This is a 40. They come in tens, which you can see the size difference here from these little guys. These tens, which take you down to 10 foot, and to a 40 that will take you down to 40 foot. I have tens, 20s, 30s, and 40s because I really like using jet divers because they're no fuss. They're super easy to use. They rarely get tangled. They only get tangled with each other, and that's if you make too sharp of a turn. But today I'm going to be throwing dipsies because I want you to learn how to use dipsies and jets. So the components of a dipsy diver are just a dipsy diver. There's a weight on the bottom that you can adjust left or right. And what that does is as you're towing this behind the boat, whichever side the weight is on, like this is set to the right at three and a half because I like to get it as far away from the boat as possible. So that weight is going to help steer this thing off to the right side of the boat. And the trip mechanism that your line is hooked to is designed to pop when you get a big fish that bites it or if you get a fish on and it's still set you can give a little tug on your line and you'll feel this thing pop it'll lay flat in the water now you're just fighting between you and the fish you're not fighting this dipsy and the fish and whenever that fish pulls back and you pull and he swims forward just a little bit then he can spit the hook. It's happened a million times and it'll probably happen to you because it's happened to me. It happens to everybody. You gotta learn, you gotta start somewhere. So the trip mechanism is what you're tying your rod to. You're gonna use a duo snap like this on your rod. Don't cheap out on these, okay? Because it will prevent line twists and it's the worst enemy of trollers is line twists, tangles, um, broken gear, and stuff like that. On the back side of this dipsy here, you are going to tie a leader line. I use a leader line. I already have one cut here. Of course, I'm using Seaguar, 40 pound or fluoro. So I always tie, you know, the polymer knot because I think it's the world's strongest fishing knot ever. I could be wrong. You may have something way fancier or better. Different strokes for different folks. So the polymer knot, once again, here, let me show you. With a bigger setup and a bigger eyelet to work through, I usually just take my line and I kind of bend it, put a loop in there automatically. And then I will take my swivel side and just put that loop through. So now you have your tag end over here. You're holding on to a loop. I move this when I'm using big gear that I need to get that big loop over. I move my tag end a little closer here and just keep that pinch. A small little loop, overhand knot, pull your loop end through. And I really, with this heavier line, I like to keep the twists out. And then you put your whole dipsy through it. And then as you cinch this up, it's going to take a minute because this heavier line is just, it's difficult to work with when you're trying to tie a good knot. So you get everything cinched up on there. Give her a good tug, like we talked about before. If you watch my other tackle talks, I pull both sides just a little. And then I trim this off, and I leave about a quarter inch on there. It doesn't have to be so close like it would if you were tying on a small, let's say, steelhead rig. If you're trying to use steelhead, you want the least amount of line because they're line-shy fish. But I use fluorocarbon just because it's a confidence thing for me. So with your leader, on the end of your dipsy, I just do my wingspan because eventually... You're going, to tie, you're going to put a bait on the end of this. Now, the walleye don't care about this. They really don't care about this much. They're going to care about what's on the end of this. So, after you make your leader, you get your duo lock snap. Let me show you again what that is. I'm not sure if you can really even focus in on that. But the whole system with this is instead of, instead of it just hooking into a little bracket, it actually goes around this part here which makes it incredibly strong and I've had fish pop off because I've used the cheap stuff before spend the money on these five bucks for five of them you should be getting the right ones so once again 
the end of our leader line that's on our dipsy, I'm going to do the same thing. But we're going to tie this polymer knot. Now remember, go through one side, and then you go back through the same side that you came out. Okay, your loop doesn't have to be so big for this one because it's a smaller bait. And then you're going to make the overhand knot again. Put your loop through your overhand knot and then put your swivel right through there. And once again, like I said, this, this heavier line takes a little bit more finagling, I guess you could say. But once you get this tight on there, it's good. World's strongest fishing knot as far as I'm concerned. Once again, I'm trimming this tag end off here about a quarter from there. So now you have a rigged up dipsy diver. That's it. You know, three, four foot of line off the back of this is okay. Because what I'm going to be using today is I'm going to be using some worm harnesses. And I'll probably have a crankbait behind something too. Because I like to mix it up and have two different styles and see what they're going to bite. I don't have a lot of time today. I only have a few hours out on the lake. So it's going to take me 20 minutes to get there. So I want to just put two baits down right away to see what produces first. But what I'll be using is I'll be just using one of these. And let's see here. I'll pull this off so I can show you how much extra line. Pool noodles are the best thing in the world. I make these worm harnesses myself. So once you get a pool noodle, no hooks. Exposed. It's all nice and tidy and neat on there. But you guys leave me enough comments and you want to see a video on how to make these worm harnesses, just let me know and I'll do it. So you're taking your harness here that we've just pulled off. And if you'll notice, it's got a little bit of memory in it from being wrapped around that pool noodle. So I just give it a little tug just to straighten the memory out. Now, when you hook this onto your dipsy, and I have another barrel swivel on the end of each one of my harnesses, just because I want zero twists and zero tangles. So you get your, if you can get your snap through there, there we go, and you get everything locked up, that's what it should look like right there. Not sure how well I'll try to do it against my arm here, but you can see that's how that works. Now, your four foot of line on the end of your dipsy just turned into seven foot all the way to the end. So. That shorter piece of line on your dipsy doesn't matter. They care about this and the worm that you're going to put on the end. Now with these harnesses here, I when I make them, see how far apart my hooks are on these? Because I know I'll put the head of the worm here and almost the very tip of the tail here. When you buy a worm harness from the store, you'll notice sometimes the hooks are this far apart. And you have this much worm hanging off the back. I've lost more fish, I've lost more bait, and been frustrated by not having hooks that are far enough apart. So that is your Dipsy Diver setup with, with a crawler harness on it. Now, if you were going to hook a crankbait on this, it still wouldn't matter, okay, because this shorter piece of line. The problem is you don't want to have too much line to where you have a long net, because you're fishing like you're, you better have a long net, where you have your pole way back here, and you're trying to reach it with a seven-foot net, and you still can't reach the fish, you've already lost, because you're going to knock that fish off. And if you do get them in or barely get them in, it's a pain in the butt. So, it's easier just to add more line if you need it than it is to originally start with a long line, and then you get a really nice fish and it gets off because the line's too long and you can't net it. I fish by myself an awful lot. You may be fishing with buddies, and then you can make a 20-foot leader if you want. You can walk all the way to the front of the boat, and they can net it for you at the back. I fish by myself most of the time, so I need a shorter leader, and I haven't really found a difference between using a super long lead versus a 3- or 4-footer. So after you, this can all stay on. Your duo snap, your leader, and the way I wrap these up is I pull that trip, me trip mechanism open, and I just wrap this under this little ring, and I go over this spot where the trip mechanism goes. And I wrap it up until all the lines on there 
and the swivel is up there. You see, I already know my wingspan. I can keep this swivel super close. And then you just lock it into place. I can keep that swivel super close to that. And going underneath this ring, it doesn't unwind enough to where it will make a huge difference. If it does, you could put your little snap back here if you don't like too much line hanging out. But that's it. Now you have a setup Dipsy to go fishing with. So let's talk about jets. Okay. Uh, jets come in different sizes. Let's see. I've got here. I've got some tens. Everything says it on the end. Tens. This is a 20. This is a 30. And this is a 40. And you can see, if I pull these out of here, you'll be able to see the differences in them all. So, if you can see this here, I know it's kind of messy, but you can see the 10 versus a 20 versus a 30 and versus the 40. And they sell these, I believe, up to 60 foot. But these will get you down to exact depth. Exact depth. There's no guessing. There's no questioning how deep you are. Do you have enough line out? Are you in the right zone? That's why I really prefer to use jet divers. But 40 is the biggest I got. And if I'm fishing 62 foot of water, I kind of have a feeling that these fish are going to be anywhere from 52 maybe to 57. And even sitting on the bottom. I mean, you could they'll be sitting on the bottom out there, especially midday when I'm going. So, what I do here is I take another piece of fluorocarbon, you know, and I go with my wingspan, just like this. Just snip it off here. And once again, we're going to do the same thing. We're going to set it up polymer knot style. Now, these do not have a trip mechanism. So no matter what, you're always pulling against the fish. You're always pulling against the fish. There is no... There is no relaxation with this where it will turn flat. So it's imperative that when you get these things, you get a fish on and you get this up to the top of the water, don't let this thing pop out of the water because it will pop out and give it just enough slack and your fish is gone. So you're going to hook your leader line on the bottom of this right here. If you notice, they will come with this really nice swivel and a really nice duo lock snap again. That's what you want for walleye. Same thing applies, polymer knot, as much as possible as much as possible. Go through one side, go back through the side you came out. Oopsie. Through one side. I should have my glasses on there. That's what happened. Through the other side. Tag end. Remember, just like the bow tie. And this is a bigger bait here, so I want to make sure that I get enough loop that I could fit it around it, because nothing is worse than not having enough line to get this through. Once again, put the whole jet through there. And then you're going to pull this up. Make sure all your line's in place. Pull it tight. Pull the two apart. Just like we did with a Dipsy. Leave about a quarter inch tag end because it's fluorocarbon for one and the fish aren't going to care. Well, I do not care. So, and you're going to take your duo snap again, another one, and you're going to tie it onto the bottom once again using the polymer knot. Out, back through, little bow tie. This loop does not have to be so big. Overhand knot with the loop end. Through your, put your swivel through it. Once again, you're pulling it up tight. Now this heavier line has a tendency to slip underneath this swivel like that. So you just really have to make sure that you are getting it just in the right spot because you don't want this thing. It will come out. You don't want it to come out. But the thing is, is making sure that you get that knot nice and seated on there. Once again, quarter inch tag end here. And now your jet diver is ready to use. You're going to hook your line onto this duo lock snap. Now, you will also see that sometimes you can buy variable jets, which this one here has two settings, one on the back and one on the front. All that's going to do is it's going to change the direction of where your bait is at on here. It's going to give it a little deeper dig as it's pulling down. Okay, Some of them have different settings up here because you can actually see in this one, where at the factory they have spots where the other holes go. 
Like, there should be another hole right here. But, these are specific. Depth, depth excuse me, depth specific. So, yeah, and I want to show you something here. How I showed you how to wrap up the Dipsy. I'm going to show you, once again, pool noodles are the best thing for this. You should take your snap end. Like a little, what is this, two inches piece of, of uh, pool noodle. You put your swivel on there and just wrap the line around the swivel a couple times. Not, not enough to where you're going to tangle anything up, but you just don't want it flapping all over the place. And then as you're reeling this up into here, you just take the end, stick it in the pool noodle, give it a little turn so it seats everything down. Now you have a tangle-free jet diver set up. So that's about it for our jet and dipsy diver lesson. Um, if you have any comments or questions, leave them below. And about the crawler harnesses, if you want to know how to make them, if I get enough comments, I'll make a whole video on how to make these crawler harnesses and how to make them effectively. So, let's get out of the water. Follow me. Let's catch some walleye. Okay, folks. So, I set up my crawler harness here, my little watermelon color that I love to use, just a willow leaf blade with some pink and green flash tape, a few green and pink beads, and my worm, but you notice how I hook my worm, you know, I know that worm's going to stretch out underwater, but you see how less tail I have when my hooks are spaced far apart? And the same thing goes with the dipsy. Um, remember, hook your pole, your line that comes off your pole, to your snap mechanism. Clip it back into place. I like to take my line, because line it's a little bit uh, kinked from winding it around here. I just give it a little tug, and it straightens it out pretty well. Then I do the same thing here with my crawler harness, if I can get it untangled. Remember when I talked about tangles and fishing? But you see it's a little little, little bit of memory in there. I try to make sure that I grab this. Sometimes I'll use my pliers if it's too bad. But I don't really worry about the hook ends much. I just want to get in the middle here, just a, a little tug to straighten it out some. Now, with these dipsies, man, you have to be moving pretty well in order to set these out. So I'm going to use my electric here, and I'm going to turn it on three, and it's going to, let's see what it'll push us at. Yeah, 1.3 miles an hour, that's good. So these fish are close to the bottom. So with dipsies, now remember I said the weight shifts you one side or another, your line counter on your reel is what I mean by feet behind the boat. You know, I actually turn the clicker off until it's time to fish just because it's kind of annoying to me. But I get it out here in the water, the whole setup, and you notice I have just enough here that I know that I can net a fish. So get everything out behind this and make sure your spinner's working and everything. And then I set it out. And this one is for the left, okay? I push my little reset button, open my lock, and then I just let it out. Now, to get down, I'm at 62 foot of water. I want to be at about 57 foot, so I'm going to let out 120 feet of line. But I don't know if you can see the pole end or not, but you have to have some tension on that pole end, okay? Or else it's going to get twisted and everything else. And I've caught several fish just letting this thing out like this. So, you know, it's, <laughs> you're letting it out and you got a little tension on it, man, and you feel boom, boom, and you just got to reel it right back up. Nothing wrong with that at all. Nothing at all. But it takes a minute to get out there. Sometimes... I'll kick the speed up just a little bit in order to get my line in the water, and then I'll let the second one out slow. So I just kick the speed up here some. We're going about two miles an hour now. But you want to have a good bend on your pole, and you want some tension on there because it will flop over on you. They're, they're delicate when they get down there, but they're so effective at reaching whatever depth you want. I can fish from 20 feet all the way to 65 feet with my dipsies. So... A lot of people don't like trolling. I don't mind it one bit. Uh, it puts fish in the boat, that's for sure. It really does. And I've caught some giant fish, too. And it's you cover more water, unless you can really get on a school of fish that are really thick to vertical jig them, it's a little difficult. And right now, I'm 62 foot of water on Lake Erie, which is about five miles out. And it's like glass. You can see behind me how, how glassy it is, so. All right, and me talking, I went out too far. 
So I'm going to bring her back in nice and slow. Because I don't want to pop that thing. Now I'll let off on my trolling speed some because it's down there. So right now I'm at 126. Too much talking, not enough watching. But never stop fishing. All right, 120 out. Now, it's important, too, with your rod holder that it's level with the water. And once you get your rod in here, I always put my clicker on and back the drag off here. So if and when a fish hits that, it's going to pull out. So you'll hear that drag start to reel out. And it's just enough that the fish will stay hooked because you're still moving. So I'm going to set up my second rig here. But I'm going to use a crankbait on this one. Uh, it's a skinny cutter. Uh, I don't know what color it is. Just gold and black with orange belly. I don't know what it is about walleye and orange bellies, but they love it. Now, I think 120 might be too deep here because I'm actually scraping the bottom, it looks like, with my, with my rod. So, let me see. If I can't get it up, maybe I'll stop at 100 and see where we're getting here. <laughs> Very important not to pop that thing because then you got to go through this process all over. You want them, when they get down there, you just want them to be down there. And I'll just kill the motor here for a second. I like using my electric, it's just less noise. Uh, fumes and everything else. So actually, at 120, we were scraping the bottom at 62 foot, so I'm going to bring this one to 90. Yeah, 90 will be good. Put my rod in the rod holder. Back off my drag so if it gets a strike or we get a fish on, we'll know it. We'll know it. I do this a lot when I'm night fishing, and it seems to work out really well. Sometimes you can hear that that line clicking on there. You know, if that's the case, just tighten your drag down just a little bit. But I don't know if you can see that or not. Let me see if I can't get you. Look, this is what I ultimately want my setup to look like. It's that close to the water. So, you know, I make sure that my rod holder's in there. A lot of people will close that. I usually only close that if it's really rough out. So... Let's see. Let's get this other one set up here. I already set my dipsy up and stuff, and I stretched my line, you know, really quick. But I just want to put this crankbait on the end and get it out there so we can be fishing two rods here. I'm going to hold there for a minute. I'm just going to get this thing to where if it gets a fish on it, it's going to start ripping out of there. Yeah, all these little flies. Okay, so now we just kind of wait. Dude, these bugs are so bad out here right now. I keep adjusting that at two feet every five minutes because I'm marking fish, so I should be getting bites. Also, whenever I adjust the depth like that, I want to find out where the bottom is according to where, how fast I'm trolling, the line I'm using, and so on. So once I start hitting bottom, I'll reel that back up. You know, I'm, it's, I'm doing math in my head at the same time, so it really comes down to making sure that you pay attention to all the little details to be successful whenever you troll for walleye. I mean, I, don't get me wrong, when they really get in here good, anybody can come out with anything and catch walleye. But when they're scattered and they're at 61 foot and the water is right now, surface temperature is 63, so the bottom can't be more than 40, 42 maybe, maybe 45 at the most. So there's a thermocline that they're sitting in there. And when they're hugged to the bottom that, that close, you really got to tick them off to get them to bite. Um, sometimes that even means digging the bottom a little with your dipsy. You're stirring stuff up and they want to see what's going on. They're going to follow it and you'll get reaction strikes. That's what I say. I'm going out two foot, two foot. 
two foot, and when I start noticing my rod digging in, I'll reel it up maybe three or four feet on my line counter. Because then I know my bait is right there in the in the mix of all those walleye. I'm just trying to get one reaction bite, a big bite, you know. When they're suspended 20 feet off the bottom, they're sitting in a thermocline, which is the difference in temperature of the water. Like up here, down to this point, is 63 down to 50 maybe. And then from here is 50 to 40, say, 42. Well, I don't know the exact numbers. I'm not a scientist. It's just my fishing mentality. Um, yeah, but if they're suspended, they're sitting in that thermocline. You just have to find where it's at. The charts will tell you and everything else, but nothing will really tell you except experience. Experience is it. And you'll get it. You will. Stick around. I'll teach you some cool fishing stuff. They're biting flies, yes! Not for the faint of heart. Gotta be willing to struggle out here sometimes. And hey, I might not catch anything, but I'm still gonna show you this video because it's informative. It would make much better sense if I start whaling on fish now. Now it's at 107, I know I was hitting bottom at 140. So I'm just gonna go on one foot increments now takes time. Anything takes time, and anything that's worth it isn't easy. Direction matters as well. Which way you're trolling, north, south, east, or west, or any variation of that. If you start hitting fish going one direction, and you turn around, and you don't hit any fish coming back through it, because you want to mark whenever you catch a fish. You get a fish on, I don't care if it's just a strike, I don't care if you lose the fish. As soon as that rod starts bending, you hit the mark button. Because you can always go back later and delete those marks. If you catch a sheephead, uh, white bass, whatever, you can delete those marks. But you don't want to miss out if you're hitting walleye. Because the whole trick is coming out here and you're trolling for walleye. Most people are just, they go west. And they don't catch anything. If you hook a walleye and you catch a walleye and you mark it right away as soon as your rod goes off. And you make a figure eight pattern back through that mark. Make that the center of your mark. I guarantee you, you'll catch more fish than if you just go in a straight line. And the, you're moving in an S shape because what happens is when you turn to the port side, all of your starboard side gear goes deeper and faster and the port side lets up and goes a little slower. A little slower wobble, a little slower flop from a spoon, a little slower blade movement from your, from your uh, crawler harnesses. So it's important to pay attention to that kind of stuff. That's what some people just don't know. I mean, everybody should be able to enjoy fishing and catch fish. I mean, it is called fishing, not catching. But it's nice to catch. I mean, come on. I mean, it's beautiful out here. It, there's not many days I could bring my boat into 61 foot of water. And I tell you, I could go to 75 foot right now if I wanted to because it is so glassy. This is it. Tomorrow, now the wind is supposed to shift to get a little stronger. It's going to be choppy. I won't come out. So I take advantage of these days whenever I can. And if I don't catch anything, I mean, I'm not losing out on much, right? It's better than pounding that nail. I'm trying to make a move here. So I want to speed up, too, when I make that move. So I don't get too blown around because you want your rods. You always want that constant bend on your rods with the dipsies. If you don't have that bend with the dipsy, it's going to flip over and then it's going to twist your line up. And I've lost whole setups. And you're talking crankbait, 12, 13 bucks, maybe 15, 20 bucks. Dipsies, 20 bucks. Swivels, another three or four bucks. You know, you, you can hit 50 bucks real fast. So it's just better to pay attention to what you're doing. Just If you don't feel like you're doing it the right way, try it. Just keep going. Just move forward. Oh, never stop fishing. Just keep going. That's all it takes, man. Just doing it. Up, oh, up. Oh. oh, that was totally a fish. Oh, he may still be on there. Wait, he's hitting it. Oh, I had three really nice 
high strikes. Oh, oh, I got him now. He came back and hit it again. I love it. I had to set the hook on him. Okay, Dipsy's popped. That's a good fish. That's a good fish. I felt that Dipsy pop it. We're a 110. And I'm trolling right now. I'm trolling uh, north. So that's a good fish right there. See, it just you just have to keep moving forward. That's it. Try little new things. Don't be afraid to try something. Most people get stuck in the rut. Oh, you got to fish with this. You got to fish here. You got to fish this far back. And if you don't try anything, what else are you doing? Every day you should learn something new. Boy, this is a nice fish. I hope it's not a sheephead. It don't feel like it. Sheephead would be pumping me to the bottom. <laughs> See my dip, see? Oh, yes. That is a giant walleye. Told you, man. Beautiful. That worked out just how it's supposed to. That's number one. Number one. That right there, my friends, is a twenty-six and a half inch Lake Erie walleye. Caught on my little signature watermelon. That pink and green is usually just a great combination. So, with the flies biting, that's how you catch Lake Erie walleye trolling with dipsies. That's how it's done. Don't forget to wash your net out. I just felt my dipsy trip. One eleven again. Boy, it's another meaty fish. Constant pressure. Just keep reeling. You don't need to pump it or anything. Just keep reeling. When you start getting your stuff in sight, I mean, there's got to be. 10 foot visibility here. Oh yeah. See everything. Another nice walleye. Really nice. This might be bigger than the last one. No, no, no. <laughs> Another stud of a walleye. Told ya. Just takes some persistence, you know, a little bit of patience, you know, figuring out what works for you too. That's really a huge deal, you know. And hopefully, I can help you put more walleye in your boat. An absolute stud. I'm telling you, look at this guy. Yum, yum, yum. Only 25 inches, but that's still a good beast. So I'm going to get out of here. I got stuff I got to take care of. I want to show you the rig that I'm using today. Uh, it's the Daiwa Heartland series. I'm not sure if you can see that or not. It's an eight foot rod, medium action. Uh, I paired it up with the Daiwa AccuDepth. A 27 LC counter reel. I've had this stuff for about 20 years. Just more proof that if you take care of your gear, it'll always work. Um, I'm a big fan of Daiwa. Love that stuff. Just like I love Berkeley. Um, yeah, so hope you guys enjoyed today's video. We got a couple really nice studs. We lost a couple fish. 
But I hope you found that trolling for walleye in Lake Erie is not too tough. And I hope that I can help somebody out there be a better fisherman when it comes to trolling for walleye. So if you like the video, go ahead and hit that like button, subscribe, leave a comment down below. I'll answer you if you got any questions or anything like that. Until next time, stay tuned, follow me, and let's catch some fish.